Hey guys, welcome to another kind of slightly off the cuff Master That Riff. What I'm looking at today is all the riffs in Unchain the Night uh, by Dawkins, which of course has got the magnificent George Lynch on guitar. Uh, the original recording's not quite a half step down. So I've tuned my guitar to half step down and obviously the parts we've got are half step down. So I've got my E to E flat, A to A flat, D to D flat, G to G flat, B to B flat, and then that high E string down to E flat as well. Now the song's in E minor and it starts off with this kind of part that's um, like an acoustic guitar and electric, clean electric guitar. What I'm going to be doing for this and most all the riffs I'm going to talk about I want to veer towards what George Lynch typically plays live with this, if he was playing with Dawkin or Lynch Mob or doing these kind of, you know, one-off gigs. So on the electric part, what we're going to be playing here is I'm going to play that open E string. Yeah. Then I'm going to play the G string. And they're both in the beat, so it's like one, two. Yeah. Then I've got this pedal note that I'm going to be playing the second fret of the D string. So I'm going to be playing that and then a note on the G string. So it starts with second in the D, a bar, to do second in the G string, then I do the second fret of the D, and fourth fret of the G, second fret of D, and fifth fret of the G string. Then back to second fret of the D, then a little pull off five to four. So I use my fourth to third finger there, and the G string. So it kind of goes. Picking wise, you could do that with a downstroke and an upstroke. Yeah. Um, or you might want to flip it around and do an upstroke in the D and a downstroke in the G. Whatever way kind of feels comfortable. But basically, that's your two bars, and we play that again. But this time, don't do a pull off, you just do second fret the D and then fourth fret. G string there, yeah. So those opening four bars on this. Yeah. Now I'm going to play pretty much the same thing, but instead of playing second fret of the D string, I'm going to play open D string. And we start with that open D as well, so it goes. The same sort of feel, it's just I'm swapping what was second fret D for uh, D string now. And at the end of that, instead of doing sitting in the fourth fret and sustaining that, I play the open D string and then three, two in the E string to lead me back to uh, kind of two bars of the E again. Let me do it again. And I've got this phrase again, but with the D string. Change. Now I'm going to play a root note of C, so I do 3rd fret of that uh, A string with the middle finger. Yeah, so I'm playing that 3rd fret of the A, play the open G string, then 3 in the uh, A string, up to 2nd fret of the G string, so I'm kind of substituting the pedal note now for the 3rd fret of the A string. And then I play 3rd fret e str uh, A string, then open A string, and then I've got a string to 5th fret of the G, then open A string to 4th fret of the G, and then we end up with an E minor chord basically. So I'm playing that you know, open A, uh, E string, the 2nd fret of the A and the D strings, and then open G and B strings. Yeah. So that bit kind of sounds like those uh, four bars from the D. Kind of your intro bit. So, as I said, there's another acoustic part in the recording, and you can hear some notes being doubled on the pedal note. But that's what typically kind of George Lynch uh, is kind of playing when he's doing it live. <clears throat> so let's get stuck into the main riff itself. So after the clean intro, and we've got that E minor chord sustaining. There's a kind of overdriven guitar <clears throat> that kind of swells up, and we get stuck into the main riff. So the first two bars in the main part of it sounds like this. Okay. So what I'm doing here is I'm playing an E power chord and we up at the 7th fret, so I've got 7th fret of the A string, 9th fret of the D string now. Now I play that with the 1st and 4th fingers, this becomes relevant later on. I notice that George Lynch plays it that way as well. 
Um, you can play it with the third finger, but try it with the fourth and C because it helps with the kind of little bit later on, unless you can do barring with the third finger, yeah. So what I'm going to be playing is that E power chord on those two strings, then the E string palm muted twice, open E string, and then this in typical George Lynch little thing, we move that power chord, so he's got a flat five in it, he does it in all these riffs, you know, think of um, Wicked Sensation, I mean there's so many riffs. Yeah, so play that power chord with a flat five. Then a bar, so I'm now at the seventh fret of the A and the D strings. Okay, so what you've got there basically is this kind of sound on the, the D strings, it's moving down chromatically. So that bar slowly goes. Notice you've just got one palm mute after that bar on the seventh fret there. Okay. Then what I'm going to be doing is palm mute on that E string twice, and then I'm doing the bar at the seventh fret of that E string with the first finger again, and then a palm mute after it, and then I'm going to play seven, seven on the A and D strings, moving down two frets, so you get fifth fret of the A and D strings. Now, these days, what uh, George Lynch will do. He's put quite a bit of vibrato in that kind of inverted power chord at the fifth fret there. And the recording, I don't think it sounds like that. So when you are playing it, what you can do is when you move down with the first finger, you have a bit of wiggle with the first finger, or use your second and third fingers to play the seventh fret part of it, and then you can use that to get a kind of wider vibrato. Yeah. So rhythmically, that bar goes. Then I've got two palm mutes at the end of it. So if I put the two bars together, it makes sense. Slowly sounds like this. Okay. Then you pretty much do that again. Yeah. So instead of playing the A power chord here, what I'm going to go down is play my A power chord to open A string, and then second fret of that D string there. So that kind of goes. Let sustain in the next part, and then you're gonna play the cool little riff sounds like this. Okay, so I'm playing that A power chord, no palm mute. Then I'm gonna play palm mute third fret E string. Then I'm gonna do zero one on the A string palm muted. And in the intro here, what you hear again is like the power chord, and then third fret of the E string. What? Lynch will do live is I don't think he does that little power chord again and later on in the actual recording he doesn't do the power chord so you just kind of do it with single notes uh, like that but in the recording it sounds like okay so those two bars slowly sound like this okay then you play the riff again Yeah, and then when I get to this point, so this is kind of like bar seven of your eight, I play that little flat five with a bit of vibrato. And then I've got this little harmonic at the third fret of the G string. And then dip in the bar before kind of the verse starts, yeah? So those eight bars sound like this. Now the verse riff is pretty straightforward. So what we're going to be doing here, we just had our dip, or I'm going to be playing a palm mute uh, on the low E string, and we're playing that for three bars with even eighths. So the challenge here is, is keeping that nice and in time, thinking one and two and three and four and three times. Yeah, and then the fourth bar you're going to do, we're going to play that little riff there. So I've got the two palm mutes to start that bar. Then I'm going to play open A, A string, third fret E, zero, one, zero on the A string, and then third fret the E string again. So no palm mute and that's what pops out. And then basically you play all that again. So you've got your three bars of your palm muted E string. bar eight you have. Okay, so that's your kind of eight bars in the verse and they sound like this.
So after that first verse, we have what I'm going to call the pre-chorus, and it's basically our main riff again. <laughs> So this is where this little variation comes in. If you're playing that, you can play it and not do the power chord again and just play a single note. You know? And then this is a little difference before we lead into the chorus. So now what I've got is a B power chord. This is bar seven of our kind of eight bars here. So I play second fret of the A string, fourth fret of the, the D string there. Then I have this little phrase that's basically 3-2 in the A string, 3-2 in the E string. Yeah. And that's what Lynch would do to kind of live. On the recording though, what I think you're hearing is like a 5-4 with a pinch harmonic in the 4th fret there and a 5-4 in the D string. So 5-4 in the G string, the pinch harmonics in the 4th fret note so it kind of pops a little bit more. So it's kind of, you know, a bit more kind of exciting I guess. So if you want, when you're playing that, you can go for the harmonic part, part of it or just go for the 3-2. Um, so that uh, pre-chorus sounds like this. So now we get to the chorus, and I think this is where there's the more most kind of variation with how uh, Lynch would maybe play this live versus how it was recorded back in the day. First off in the recording, I think there's two guitar tracks. So we're doing it for one. So you're kind of doing a combination of the two. But what I'm going to start off with, um, this is all a typical kind of E minor descent thing. So we've got the E power chords, D power chords, C power chords, and Gs and stuff. But I'm going to start with 7th fret the A string, 9th fret the D string there for an E power chord. That comes in in beat one. Then I'm going to play a D power chord, so go down two frets, but that comes in the end of beat two. So what you do in beat two is like a little percussive sound. So I do like a down, play that power chord with an upstroke, yeah. Then I go for beat four, I play the E power chord twice. Okay, so that bar slowly sounds like this. Then I'm going to play 0-2 on the E string to get to G power chords. I'm playing 3rd fret of the E string, open D and G strings. So then I play a D power chord, but I'm going to play open D string, 2nd fret G, 3rd fret of the B string there. Because it's easier to jump to that rather than from this one up here, you know. So, um, that kind of bar sounds like this. Then we have the next bar where I'm going to do an E power chord, D power chord, C power chord. And your E's in beat one, your D power chord is in the end of beat two. So one and two and three and four. So your C power chord in beat four, yeah. And this is why I was saying about playing these with the first and fourth fingers, because what I'm going to do here in the next bar is I'm going to bar the D, D G, and B strings at that fifth fret, pan mute it, I'm going to pluck the B string, the G string, the D string, and then back to the G string. So you're playing a little C triad. Then I go up two frets and do the same thing, but it's now seventh fret. Yeah. Now, if you were playing your power chords with first and third finger, you could go for the bar in that as well. Probably feels comfortable. For me, it's the pinky. And funny enough, for George Lynch, he uses the pinky as well. Okay, so that those two bars sound like this. Yeah. Then pretty much you're doing that all again. Yeah. Then I'm going to play. This would be our kind of bar seven of the eight bars. I'm playing a C power chord. And then I'm playing this little kind of, um, it's effectively like an A with a C sharp in the bass. So I'm playing third fret of the A, fifth fret of the D. A bit of vibrato on that. Yeah. Then I'm going to move up. So my first finger is at the fourth fret of the A string, and my fourth finger is at the seventh fret of the D string. Again, before I play that, because it's in the end of beat four, I would do a little percussive sound. And then I finish it off with a D power chord and then a slide to get into the next bit. 
This is where you'll see Lynch play this bit more open. So instead of playing the third fret of the A string and fifth fret of the D string, you can play that third fret of the A, but with an open G string there. And instead of playing fourth on that A string and seven in the D, you can play four on A string and then second fret of the um, G string there. And you know, D power chord would be how we played it before, open D string, second fret of the, the G and third of the B. So the alternative way of playing that, and you could still put vibrato on that C. Uh, yeah. And I've seen Lynch, even in the same performance of the song, play that chord like that, or like this. Yeah. So he's changing it up even when he's playing it live. You can pick whatever you want and you can do the same, you can change it up too, because it's still going to sound the same, you know. It's just a little bit easier maybe to move between the chords, or this has a bit of a zingier sound. Okay, so that chorus sounds like this. Now after our first chorus and before we get into the second verse, we pretty much play the riff again for four bars. But they have the classic little fill. Okay, so what I'm playing there is I'm going to do a pull off 15 to 12 on that B string. And then when I get to that, sec that 12th fret there, I'm going to dip with the bar twice. It's like a little half step dip. Then I play 15, 14, 12 in the G string. You know, if you want, you can make it a pinch harmonic just to make it pop in a little bit more. But that's just a little kind of four bound to loop before we get into the next verse. In the next verse is pretty much the same. We've got a pan muted E string. Okay, it's just these bars here have a little variation. So the first variation, uh, this is going to bar five. You're going to do your palm mutes in the E string until beat four. One, two, and three, and. And then I'm going to play a little D to E power chord there. So I'm doing fifth fret of the A, seven in the D. Just go up two frets. Then I do the same thing in the next bar. Palm mute up to beat four. One, two, and three, and. And my little kind of D to E thing here is open A string, open D string. And then a bar at the second fret of that. A and D strings. So I'm effectively doing zero two there. The next part is exactly the same. One and two and three and four. Yeah, and then in bar eight you've got another one of your kind of little fills. Yeah. So that little kind of lead in in verse two sounds like this. Now the second pre-chorus is pretty much identical to the first one. There's just one little variation. When we get to our little bit... Um, it just doesn't go back to the G. You know, it doesn't go... It does... It just plays an open power chord, A power chord then instead, before you get something to the next bit. So, it's not uh, much different, that one, but the second P chorus sounds like this. Now in our second chorus, the only variation is really what happens in bars seven and eight, so everything's the same. <laughs> C power chord to B power chord, and then we have this D A bit, so it's like a D power chord and an A power chord before we get into another repeat of the chorus. So again in the recording, you know, it's probably just a C power chord here. 
that you can put vibrato on. Maybe live, uh, Lynch might play the three with the open G string. You want to get to that B power chord before you do your D. Yeah. So that kind of second chorus sounds like this. So we played the chorus again, and it's exactly the same as our first chorus. It's just now we have our you know C power chord. You know we're climbing up with this again. You can play, yeah. but then we lead into this little interlude bit. So what we're going to be doing here is I'm going to play an A power chord. So quickly move into a B power chord. So I'm playing open A string, second fret of the D, then play my B power chord again. I'm using my first and fourth finger here. So they're unpan muted those two notes. But then I'm going to pan mute uh, that B power chord four times after that. And then in beat four, I go to C power chord. So it's got a fret and then back to B. Yeah. So that bar sounds like this. And then the next part is just all pan muted that B power chord. And when I'm pan muting it, I'm hitting both strings. Yeah. So the two bars at tempo kind of sound like this. Then you do that again. So the little variation there is a pan mute that kind of bar four. I've got the pan muted B chord three times. Play a G power chord, but then there's a rest after it because it's a nice kind of short kind of chord. And third fret E, open a D and G strings again, and then an A power chord, and then back into. Yeah, so in bad eight, there's a bit of silence there, and then just before the solo starts, he goes, he plays these little chords here, I think. So what we're doing is here, kind of like a G and then the D with F sharp in the bass, but I'm playing at 10th fret of the A string, 12th fret of the D. Again, I'd use first and fourth here, and there's a little percussive. So I'll do a little quick down up. Then I move that first finger down a fret uh, to get into kind of the guitar solo and kind of riff. And the guitar solo riff is pretty much just your chorus again. Yeah, you're just kind of playing that. So that section, uh, chorus three and that little interlude leading to the guitar solo, Sounds like this. So after the solo, we pretty much play our eight bar riff again. Just a couple of variations. First one, we have this little ending in bar four. So what I'm doing here is I'm playing an open E string. Then I've got this little noise. Then I'm gonna slide from ninth fret at the D and G strings. To the seventh fret and give it a good bit of vibrato there. Then we've got four bars of riff again. Just like the intro riff, when we first play the riff, we've got a harmonic here, but it sounds like 17th fret, the G string. We dip down and then we have our before the kind of next section. So that little post solo kind of riff sounds like this. Now what we've pretty much got is like our kind of outro chorus and outro guitar solo and the rhythm riff part of it's pretty much the same. It's kind of like a eight bar with repeats, it's kind of 16 bars. But what we're doing is we're going to play like an E power chord uh, for two bars. So then I would play a D power chord open. So I'm doing that zero and the D, second and the, the G, third and the, the B string. Then. And I open E power chord, I just kind of played like Zero knee and then second fret the D string. And then to get the the C power chord, I kind of lead in. I'd play like an open A string pan muted, and then maybe second fret of the 
of the A string, maybe even a power chord, B power chord. Or maybe they open like that, that we did before. Then I've got A power chord, open A string, second fit the D and Gs. And then to lead into the E power chord again, I do a little three, two. So that's kind of your eight bars. It's like doing the repeat again and that's pretty much the riff until the kind of song ends you know and you've got George and kind of soloing over it you know Now we end the song pretty much just kind of playing all the way through. We've got E power chord, we've got a D power chord, we've got a C, and then the very end, very end bit you're going to do three two in the A string, three two in the E string, just like we did before, and then E power chord, and there's a little kind of double hit in that E power chord at the very end. So that's it. It's pretty much repeating all those choruses until the very end there. That's it, guys. That's uh, all the riffs to Unchain the Night by Dawkin. Uh, if you want access to the Helix patch crate for this or you want access to the Sound Slice animated tab I've got for the whole kind of riffs in the tune, come on over to the Patreon group. You'll get access to that as well as all the kind of exclusive lessons we've got in there. Currently we're on our 10th weekly workout and we're looking at doing little uh, legato kind of drills to work in your legato techniques. So if you're interested in that, come on over to the Patreon guys and you can check that out. If you're on other platforms as well, you can follow me on threads and you can follow me on Facebook too, okay? So enjoy that, guys. Have fun with it, and I'll hopefully see you soon.